Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we're going to be able to get back to the basics today. We're actually going to go and talk about laws and self-defense laws and hypothetical self-defense situations and get you educated about something. Why am I doing this? Well, because I've had this just horrible rash of phone calls lately from individuals who have been doing the right thing. They've been going out, they purchase guns, they've been going and doing their firearm training, they're doing their basic handgun, advanced handgun. They're sitting there with firearm instructors, exactly the types of people who should be training them on how to properly use a firearm. But I'm not sure if they're the ones that should be training them on how to use the law because I have consistently in the last couple of months got this question, which is, my firearm instructor said that I can never shoot an unarmed person. Is that actually true? Well, it depends, of course, on what the situation is, but the short answer is, is no, there are some instances where you, may, you definitely can shoot an unarmed person and do so lawfully. So today, Let's spend a few minutes, let's clear the record, let's talk about the law, and let's talk about, can I really shoot an unarmed person in self-defense? Okay, so here's what we're talking about today. We are talking about self-defense laws, and is it possible to deploy lethal force with the use of a firearm against an unarmed attacker. Now, I am gonna use Washington law as the baseline. I will tell you when I am talking about Washington law, I recognize many of you live in states far freer than the state of Washington. Congratulations, tell me how the United States of America is for those of us here in Washington that forgot it. However, I can assure you that Washington self-defense laws are not gonna be too different from most other states. In fact, most states operate on the same principle of self-defense laws. There are some iterations, and so it is your duty to understand what your local state laws are. But in general, we can use force to defend ourselves so long as the force that we use is one, necessary, two, reasonable, both objectively and subjectively, and three, proportional. And what I want to focus on today is really that third one, which is proportionality. Because where I see people getting in trouble on self-defense situations, it's not the use of force. That's usually lawfully allowed. It's the extent to which they use force or the amount of force they use or the frequency in which they use force that ultimately ends up landing them in trouble. Now, the rule of law, generally speaking, in every state is that if we are required to use proportional force, you don't get to bring a gun to a fist fight. That's the old adage. And as a matter of fact, our ability to use lethal force typically will only exist if we or somebody else in our presence is in imminent threat, imminent threat, of death or serious bodily injury. Now, states will use other types of geeky lawyer language to describe that, but if you are in imminent threat, which means that threat could happen at any moment of death or serious bodily injury, now you, in many instances, are allowed to use lawful lethal force. But here's the thing. You can be placed in that imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury by an unarmed assailant. Now, here's how this typically takes place, okay? For example, if we have the attacker who looks like this and the victim kind of looks like this, what we have in that situation is probably going to be a pretty good fist fight where the better combatant is likely to prevail. However, the likelihood that any one of these two individuals is ultimately gonna be in a position where they are facing imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury is not particularly great. However, if you change the victim from this guy to this guy, or you change the victim from this guy to this woman, well, now you can see that almost the very moment that combat begins, the would-be victim is in all likelihood in incredibly imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And so despite the fact, despite the fact that the attacker here is not armed, their ability to imminently inflict death or serious bodily injury to another person is clearly present and therefore may justify the use of lethal force. Take a look at a situation in which somebody is trying to run you over with a car. Now, 
Again, is a car by design a lethal weapon? No, it's not. But can it be used as a lethal weapon? It most definitely can. And if there is imminent threat of you being run over by a car, then yeah, you are an imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And at that point, the use of lethal force may be lawfully justified. What if the attacker just has a bunch of zip ties and duct tape? Now, the likelihood that you're gonna be killed by zip ties or duct tape is pretty remote, but the likelihood that you're about to have a very, very serious crime committed upon you, thus placing you in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury, oh, that is really great, and therefore the use of lethal force could be justified in that situation. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at case law around the entire country, we oftentimes see most states will authorize the use of lethal force in one of four instances. Number one, you yourself are in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. Number two, a person in your presence is in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And so we see this like for the Elijah Dickens at a shopping mall in Indiana who now sees a mass shooting take place. Everybody in his presence is in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. He is then allowed to take the shot, which he he does. There are a couple of other instances, however, where lethal force is oftentimes justified. Three, you are having a felony committed upon your person. Now think about it. The types of felonies that are committed upon your person, assault, rape, sexual assault, burglary, robbery, kidnapping. These are the types of felonies that are committed upon your person. And when you think about it, each and every one of them places you in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And then in some states, there also is the ability to use lethal force for if a felony is being committed inside your home or abode, which means that in many states, yes, it is lawful to use lethal force to the home intruder who comes into your home. When they're milling around on the outside of the property, they are merely a trespasser in all likelihood, not a felony in your state. When they come through the window or the sliding glass door, they are now a burglar. That is a felony and in many instances can justify the use of lethal force. But you see in almost all of these hypotheticals that I talked about, never once did I mention that the attacker was actually armed. So the bottom line is for all the instructors out there is that are there instances in which lethal force can be used against an unarmed person? Yes, there actually is. And we see these occur with some frequency. Now, this is the most important caveat I wanna give you about today's video. I have explained to you what you have the right to do. I have not explained to you what doing the right thing is. And oftentimes what you have the right to do and what constitutes doing the right thing may actually be different. And this is where I think the firearm instructors can be so immensely helpful because they can talk about all of the tactical considerations that go into potential conflict, potential escape routes and things such as that. We can talk about how to defuse the situation, how to deescalate the situation. These are all things that the trained tactical folks do an excellent job and why I encourage every single one of you to do as much training as humanly possible. But you see, all of you do this training all the time so that you don't end up in the morgue and that's important. But how often are you doing the training so that you don't end up in prison? Hmm? Well, that's why I do recommend that you find some kind of a local attorney in your state and go and visit a class at least once a year and just refresh your brain about what your laws of self-defense mean in your state when you can and can't use force, when you can and can't use lethal force. Because I can assure you, if you err on the wrong side, they have a name for that and that is called the defendant. Listen, you may have more questions about self-defense laws or anything else related to this topic. You can always contact Washington Gun Law if you don't know how to get a hold of us. That information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.